how do I logistically set up an RIA? That is today's question on the Transition to RIA video series. It is question number four. Okay, today's question is, how do I logistically go about setting up an RIA? So this assumes uh, you've already kind of worked through the steps. Uh, do I wanna do I wanna set up my or start my own RIA? Uh, what am I gonna need to do from uh, you know get an office space and what's my team gonna look like? So there's, there's a lot of variables involved. Uh, again, that's the sort of thing I help advisors with uh, all the time is to think all of these variables through. Uh, but let's let's assume you've gone through that exercise and you're now at the point where okay, I want to set up that RIA. So logistically, how is an RIA actually, you know, legally set up? So that's what we're going to be talking about here. Um, now, for starters, uh, you could, in theory, do it yourself. Uh, now, now, generally, no one does. And I'll explain why not. And I'll explain how uh, folks like uh, your peers actually do go about setting it up with the, with the help of uh, con compliance consultants. But in theory, there's no rule that says you could not learn how to do it yourself and go in and actually do it. So just initially here, I want to kind of go over, you know, what the steps are of actually logistically setting up an RIA. Uh, and even though you might not ultimately desire to do it yourself, just know uh, it is doable. Again, there's no rule that says you have to have some, you know, kind of certification or, or be an attorney or anything like that to, to do this. Um, so it's, it's at least good to know what the process is and then how and why you would utilize someone else to help you with this. So uh, kind of the, the first thing to be aware of is something called the Investment Advisor Registration Depository or the IARD system. Uh, you can actually Google that IARD if you wanted to learn more about it. Um, but it is the online platform where you would go to register your RA, whether your SEC or state registered, and again, that, that varies based on, I'll do a video on this as well, you know, how much assets you have and, and why you might be SEC or state. So look for that video if you wanna learn more about that. Um, but that is where you would register, whether again, SEC or state. Now, uh, interesting enough, the IARD system is actually run by FINRA, um, even though as an RIA, you will not be regulated by FINRA, but it is technically FINRA that runs the IARD system. So if you were to look it up and see that and think, oh, I'm in the wrong place. No, it is FINRA that runs that platform, um, but it is for, among other things, where you would register an RIA for, again, either SEC or state. So in that system, that's where you would do the initial filing to, to legally set up the RIA in the first place. And it is also the same system that's used for uh, the updates over time and, and, and the frequency and you have to do that varies. It's, it's generally a minimum of a, a once an annual process, sometimes more frequently than annual if you have certain kinds of updates. Um, but point being, it's not just the front end system that's used, it's, it's also used on a going forward basis as well. Again, the IARD system. So now, with respect to what, what actually has to go into that file and that initial file. And there's, there's four main things to keep in mind here. And, and this has actually grown as you'll see. And, and so, you know, what, one day, maybe I'll be talking about more than, more than four things, but, um, and for most of you, it will be three, but I do want to cover all four here. Uh, so with that, I'll name them and then we'll go over each one, but uh, is the ADV part one, the ADV part two, uh, now, relatively new here, the ADV part, well, so-called part three, also known as form CRS. Uh, now, this is a new uh, requirement that came out of reg uh, best interest, reg BI that came out. Um, that, now, that now involves this uh, ADV part three or, or form CRS, so we'll talk about that. And then the fourth thing is for those of you that might uh, ultimately be state registered as opposed to SEC, in theory, uh, each state, unfortunately, there's not necessarily a uniform standard in everything they do from a registration standpoint. So depends on what state you're in. There, there could be a few one-offs that you might, because you're in the state of Wyoming, uh, might have to uh, file some additional information as well that, that maybe the, the SEC folks don't or a state person that's in, in Colorado might have, not have to. So uh, real quick, to go through those four 
uh, ADV Part One. Now, now you've, you're probably somewhat or rather familiar with ADV Part Two because um, I'm sure you use it with your clients now if they have fee-based accounts. It's it probably the ADV Part Two of the your corporate RIA of the firm you're, you're currently affiliated with. Um, but ADV Part One uh, is mostly a kind of a, a bullets and check the box thing. It, it has, I don't know, 100 plus kind of form fields that you, you either drop in specific data or you, you check the box of, of a whole bunch of different data points. And that's, that's really a way for the regulators to kind of understand the main nuts and bolts of the RIA. So everything from, you know, your asset level down to the, uh, you know, the administrative stuff, you, you know, your address, the names of the principals involved, that is all part of the ADV part one. And it's, and it's not really anything that is, um, you know, can easily be printed out. It's, it's really a, a document you view online because it, it is multiple pages that are structured and you kind of click to move through it. So it's, it's not a real user friendly document, but it is, it is very, you know, data intensive of, of given regulators, certain variables that they want to be aware of. Uh, so that's part one. Part two is, is again, what generally uh, clients see, because that's what you're required to share with clients. You're not required to share part one with them. Uh, although, and I'll do a whole video on this, it'll be worthwhile doing, but part one, if you're not aware, can be accessed and viewed online by anyone on, on, a, on a public website. So um, part one and part two, for that matter, most, most people don't realize necessarily you can, you can look at part one as well. Uh, but part two is that, is that more narrative piece. So part two is, is not a, a check the box or a fill in the bubble or, or select from this drop down. It's, it's really free form. Now, when I say that there was a time where uh, ADB part twos were, there wasn't a whole lot of guidance given of, okay, what needs to be covered in an ADB part two. And, and unfortunately, as a result, the, these ADB part twos became just extremely unruly that they, you know, that you, you would work with, you know, compliance consultants or attorneys. And so to kind of the proverbial cover every basis would, would put in so many clauses and verbiage and, and, and it would be, you know, this voluminous document that wasn't really all that helpful to clients because it just covered, you know, arguably more material than was necessary. And so a number of years ago, the regulators came out and said, okay, it's, it's still going to be a free form document as opposed to a check the box, but there is going to be certain things you have to address in a certain order. So if you were to look at an ADV part two of one RIA compared to the next, you'll see the table of contents is generally always the same. And the order of those sections is always the same, but then how each of those sections is answered in, in free form text that that's what varies from one ADB to the next. And the idea is the regulator said, Hey, let's make this as client friendly as possible. So you, you need to, again, that's why it's not just check the boxes is try to detail out to the client that the necessary information that would help them decide whether they want to enter into that relationship uh, with, with your RIA. So uh, that's part two uh, kind of worked off of that essentially is, is now this part three, this, this form CRS. And that, that came out of Reg BI. And so that impacted both broker dealers and RIAs alike. Uh, you know, that this ADV part three, it's, it's much shorter than, than an ADV part two. ADV part twos depend on the size of the firm easily, you know, could be 20 plus pages. Uh, this ADV part three, the form CRS actually has a prescribed maximum number of pages. It's in the single digits that the regulators say, you have to keep it concise. You have to answer these specific things. And, and you know, that's, that's, uh, was kind of entirely new for the broker dealer world in the RA world. It's, it's certainly a new document or what there, that document didn't exist before, but a lot of what the, the this, this form CRS covers was already addressed for the most part in ADV part two. Again, a big part of being an RIA is, is you have to disclose conflicts of interest to your client. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, you eliminate them all, but th there's a lot that, that just simply can't be eliminated. And so it's always been that you have to disclose those. And so a lot of the information that's in this form CRS, the ADV part three, for, for a long time now, uh, RIAs have been already uh, completing that in, in their ADV part two. Now it's just, hey, let's pull out a little of that information and put it in a real specific format 
over here in the part three as well. So that is, that is part of the filing as well. Uh, and then last, like I talked about earlier, depends on the state you're in. There might be some sort of one-off uh, requirement that, that your particular state, again, only if you're state registered. If you're above 100 million, you generally don't have to worry about that. Um, but your state might have, might have a one-off. And, and to be honest, because every state is different, I, I couldn't even tell you if, if Wyoming is different than Colorado, because that's, that's not, I'm not a compliance consultant. I don't, I don't do that all day long, but I do know uh, that there are differences or could be differences from one state to the next. Um, so if, if you completed all these, if you learned how to do it and, and went through the steps, ADD one, two, three, and then maybe with your state and on the IARD system, again, you could go in there and you, and you essentially submit all of these. Again, this is for your initial setup. Uh, and then the respective regulator, either the SEC or state will review it and ultimately come back to you and, and you know, essentially say, okay, it is complete. You can begin acting as an RA. They, they do not approve of your RIA, and that, that's real specific. You, you cannot, under any circumstances, uh, you know, on your website or in your marketing materials, give any sort of impression that, oh, I'm, a, I'm an SEC approved RIA. That, they, that is absolutely not the case. They basically are looking for, have you met the minimum requirement to be able to hold yourself out as an RIA? Uh, and part of it is, you know, a, a background look. They'll look at a C or an advisor, C or D, and, and there could be variables there that are of concern to them that either they want additional information on or, or could outright uh, prevent them from saying, okay, you can now become officially an RIA. So just make sure you don't use the word approve in your vernacular when, when again, the regulators are passed along there. So the kind of the point of this is in theory, you could on your own become an expert on the IARD system. Uh, you could become an expert on ADD part one, part two, part three, and maybe figure out what your state may or may not require. Um, and you could do this all on your own. The reality of course, is you probably do not wanna do that. And there's a reason for that one, because of the amount of work that goes into it. And the fact that it is a very complicated process. This is part one, 100 plus variables, well, if you, if you, it might even be 200 plus, I haven't done a, done a, a count lately. Um, but, you know, maybe if you forget to, or you do check this box, well, down on page three, you also need to be filling something else in. And, and again, unless you do this day in and day out, you might very well miss that. So uh, every advisor uh, that starts up an RA uses what is just, you know, acceptedly called a, a compliance consultant. And I'll do a whole video on these as well. These are firms that this is their specialty. This is what they do day in and day out. So you go to them, you hire them. They, they understand all of this. They are experts because they do it over and over for all different kinds of RIA. So they are the experts in the ADV one, two, and three. And they are the experts in if Wyoming is different than Colorado at the state level. Um, and so for the same reason, clients come to work with you. Uh, in theory, you could have a very smart client that is very capable of doing research online about how to manage their money, but there's still a reason they come to you. It's because you do this day in and day out. You have the experience of however many years working with however many clients, and, and they'll just never be able to replicate that. And, and, and even for some reason, if they could, there's oftentimes quite, if, if nothing else, it's in their mind, it's just better to pay someone like you to do it for them. They, they don't want to do it for them. And so again, the same thing in theory, you could, you just generally would never want to try to do this filing on your own. So the main takeaway is just understand the actual steps involved. You have to create all these documents uh, and you have to do this initial filing of that. Um, and then when you, when you get back, uh, then you can move forward. But again, the process that every, every advisor I've ever worked with and certainly would suggest to any advisor uh, going forward as well, uh, you absolutely work with these compliance consultants to, to help you with this process. Um, and, then, and then the last piece I've done is it's not just, uh, not that there's very many people having any doubt that, that, that hiring someone to do this for them is the right path, but it's not just a matter of it's, it would be easier for you, albeit yes, these compliance consultants cost money. I'll, I'll do a video on that uh, of, of kind of what you could expect from a, a cost perspective. But also keep in mind, if, if you attempted to, to try to do it yourself and, and, and down the line, uh, you know, during a, a routine exam of your RA, say by the SEC, if you're SEC registered, and, and they, they might take issue with something in your ADV. And if your answer is, oh, I, I, I did it myself, uh, I had never done them before, so I, 
I guess I, I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, that, that's just not going to fly with the regulators. They, they, they don't want to see you try to avoid the right, you know, investment to do it right uh, because you wanted to do it yourself. So just because you hire a compliance consultant to, to, to do it, not for you, but with you, I mean, they'll do the bulk of the work, but it is in partnership. That, that's not a, a get out of jail card with the regulators, but, but clearly if you can demonstrate, hey, I am out there, I'm trying to work with the best consultants there are, I'm willing to put the investment into it to do it right, um, that, that's gonna go a, a long way with the regulators than, than you saying, oh, I, I, I did attempt to kind of learn this all myself. Um, so in future videos, again, to, to uh, just kind of tie all this together, I, I will do a video on, on how long this process takes, and you think, ah, isn't that a simple answer? But uh, you know, from the time you file to the time screw, but, but there actually are a number of variables involved. So I'll, I'll do a whole separate video on that. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll talk about the cost of these compliance firms and, and why that cost might vary. So, so take a look uh, for, for those videos as well. So with that, I'm Brad Wales with Transition to RIA. And what I do is I help advisors understand everything there is to know about why and how to transition to the RIA model. So talking about things like on this video or any of my other videos that you can go and take a look at, uh, that's what I help advisors do. Understand how does this work? How do the economics work? What would it look like for me as, a, as an advisor in my, my specific circumstances? That's what I help advisors with. Uh, so if you're not already there, head on over to transitiontoria.com. Uh, lots more videos you can look at. I have white papers. Uh, and then the, the easiest thing to do is, is right at the top is a contact link. Jump on that. You can, you can instantly schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. Uh, and I can begin the whole conversation with you as you start to, to kind of learn more about what this RA model might mean for you. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.